I'm Keith Peters. I'm from the University of Florida. I primarily do uh, neuroimaging and neurointervention. So the way we look at it is the, the standard thing that we're normally uh, looking at with perfusion, if you're using a 64 slice or whatever scanner, which has been our standard workhorse for years, is this four centimeter slab on perfusion. You can sort of shift where it's going to be a little bit, but for the most part, we target it to go through the MCA territory. But there's a lot we can miss. There frequently you get the indication that the patient has had a stroke, so you're just localizing there. You find out later that it was really posterior fossa symptoms, so you've missed the posterior fossa. You miss maybe the high ACA watershed zone territories. So it's very inadequate as far as being able to decipher all areas of uh, ischemia. So when you get into whole brain imaging, we're able to get past those particular pitfalls and difficulties. This is off of the 320 scanner, but it's used as sort of a representation of what we've been looking at in the past. A single slice level, get basically four slices through that four centimeter territory that we're evaluating. But this is what we're able to get to now. Uh, this is uh, more processed than what we normally have to look at, but this is what you can do where you have cerebral blood flow maps, you've got the blood volumes, time to peaks, and mean transit time. Where we live and breathe is getting an indication of where we're going to be imaging on uh, the time to peak, where we need to be looking rather, and then cerebral blood volume and mean transit time is telling us sort of what the actual pathology is. These are the ones we live and breathe on. This is sort of the fun part. Just going to go through some cases that is sort of earmark our evolution over time over the past couple years. We're now getting to the point we have enough case volume to do some good retrospective reviews and we're setting up some prospective analysis uh, for different um, pathologies. This is a patient where we're looking at an overall small penumbra that we can uh, see about uh, seeing proceeding for treatment or not. 80-year-old uh, female, history of hypertension, diabetes, had had two prior uh, infarcts, had acute onset of aphasia and right hemibody weakness. This is the case that you've seen a little bit of in the past, the occlusion of the uh, left middle cerebral artery at the uh, M1, M2 juncture region. And here you can see the maps that we're looking at. We use the time to peak map to tell us where to look. We go over the volume. This is very much in the dark areas, the very uh, black and dark purple colors, telling us that this is a very significant area of infarction. And the mean transit time map is also showing that those same areas and the surrounding tissue really, everything is down. We do not have a significant penumbra on this. And she was not uh, treated. You can see how, again, when you're looking at the overall coronal imaging, it's able to show that you that you have a high enough volume. It's greater than the 30 to 50 percent used by uh, many folks to determine whether or not to proceed. Basically, there's only a little bit of temporal lobe sparing. And angiographically, she was taken that far, but that's uh, when the uh, endovascular therapist who was on that day uh, elected not to treat once he saw what the imaging findings were. And this compares the CT angio versus the uh, catheter angiogram. Uh, this is what the end result in her case was, and you can see how there's such a distinct correlation between the final infarct size and the mean transit time map. Well, that's what we're heavily relying on now to find out what our final infarct volume is and whether this is a good patient to proceed with treatment. Um, so what we're looking at overall with volumetric perfusion imaging, it's gone away from just looking at the head. So it's not just a brain scanner. It's able to look at head and neck regions. There are uh, protocols being set up for imaging liver, et cetera. So it's a whole organ system. We're able to assess the entire angiographic cycle with it, uh, arterial capillary venous. that's given us better physiology information, telling us what's going on with the pathology. And it's very rapid and reliable with, at least at this point, it looks like very acceptable radiation dose profiles. So these are really becoming workhorse scanners. They're used heavily, not only for the neuro group, but uh, they're extending into body imaging. And also the trauma group uh, uses them because you can get uh, decent trauma imaging off of it. And immediately, if there's a concern about dissection, go ahead and do the uh, perfusion imaging uh, to evaluate that. So it's been a very positive thing at our institution and enjoy the sunsets in San Diego. Thanks much.